I stand by behind the officials of the Boko Haram in Chad and Northern Cameroon has also been arrested. Okay, like I said before, our topic for today is our mother tongue. How well are we teaching our children? What is the survival of our mother tongue? Considering international media globalization, what are we doing to make sure it survives? I'm going to play you this video, and when we come back, you meet my guest. Okay, in just a few moments, the video is going to be coming up, but I must explain to you that these are children whose parents have taken their time to teach them their languages. Nigerians, you know how well-traveled they are, and to make sure they sustain their languages, even if they're, they're married to people other nationalities, they make sure that they are imbibing the culture, you know, of Nigeria, and basically language, which is key in their children to make sure they try, they learn, even if they speak it with a different accent, they try to speak their language. My producer is going to be rolling that tape very soon. Evil, but I can guess that this is what she's saying. It's it's essential that you should speak your language no matter where you are. You should, and it's so beautiful when you have children like that, you know, speaking the language. Anyway, I'm not an expert in this, but I know what you know it's obtainable for us to do. I have with me um, Madam Matilda Diola Adipo Jumi, she's the publicity secretary of Afeni Ferry Renewal Group UK chapter. And we're going to be talking about the survival of our mother tongue. Thank you very much, madam, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. It's so good to have you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so there's this fear that our indigenous, our indigenous language is going to disappear. Oh, yes. Uh, it's a veritable fear. And we should all be very much scared that it is possible for this, uh, our indigenous languages to disappear. Um, more so, since even this program has been conducted in English. <laughs> I'd rather we were speaking Yoruba, because as a Yoruba person, I feel more comfortable um, speaking my language. Hmm. So you want us to do this conversation? Oh, do you have Yoruba programs in Nigeria? There's a lot, and this way, a cab was loading it to me, and you know, like that. I, I love the way they are said usually, but I don't know how possible we could do that here. You're very lucky because mm -hmm. they have a renewal group. Yes. They have a United Kingdom, maybe by. And they have a lot of people who are in the United Kingdom, maybe by. They have a lot of people who are in the United Kingdom. Yes. They have a lot of people who Papa Julio, I want more to be silly. Tio Jerry Pay, uh, oh boy, the Yoruba, Dada. Are you more comfortable with this? Are you sure you're not making me uncomfortable? Okay, because I'm okay. looking at it. Look at it because there's one question that I need to put to you. Yeah. You see, as long as people understand what you're saying, yes. because if you look at it today, they are global languages. That's right. In English, number one. Yes. I think it's no longer French now. We're talking, um, 
Chinese, yes. you know, and there's the Spanish and the likes. That's Isn't right. this an easier way for us to communicate instead of, you know, you telling us specifically we have to learn our language? I'm not saying that we should close our eyes to other languages. Okay. I'm saying, first and foremost, a child, an individual, needs to identify, be able to identify himself. And, uh, and it's the first language that you breathe in, which is your mother tongue, most of the time, especially when you are raised, you are born and raised in your country, then among your people. And then that is the language that you first get in touch with, you have contact with, with the outside world to which you've been born. Okay. So, for instance, a Yoruba child born into a Yoruba family automatically will learn Yoruba language. Okay. And once, and this is the language with which you are being instructed, right from birth until you go to school. And like you said, English language, of course, it is the universal language at the moment, you know, for some time before all these other languages start coming in. For mm -hmm. instance, somebody like me, I studied French when I was in, the, in, in secondary school, yeah. and I studied it um, both at O and A level. And I'm comfortable speaking French, but I'm more comfortable speaking my, my own language, which is Yoruba language. Okay. That's very good. Um, I'd like our viewers to know that the numbers will be scrolled on the screen very soon, and it is your program, and you must or you have to contribute to this because we're talking. We have close to or if to say, I mean, to be safe, we have over one million Nigerians living in the UK, oh, sure. and Nigerians have travelled vast, you yes. know, across the world. So we need to maintain this. You're saying, of course, we need to make to you know to make sure our culture survives. Oh, certainly, and our how culture we have survive. to do. Okay, so we have a caller. Let's find out what our caller has to say. Okay. Then, of course, we'll put more questions to you. Hello, caller. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Well, I am uh, Abiwari Ibadan. I'm calling from Edinburgh in Scotland. Oh, okay. Thanks for calling, sir. Uh, well, yeah, it's nothing as good as um, raising our children in our mother tongue. There is a saying in English that says that creativity comes in mother tongue. Creativity comes in mother tongue. If mother tongue are properly utilized, most of the things that we think really make our lives much more better. And um, there are so many things that uh, we get from our culture that can easily be transferred to technological development. The in-depth meaning of that activity is much more properly expressed in our language. Okay. When we look at some other countries like uh, Belgium, Netherlands, um, Germany, Finland, Norway, Denmark, they are probably the only part of the world that their language, they are unique with their language. The Finnish, the fin the Finnish or the, the Finnish are unique with the Finnish language, the Belgians are unique with their uh, Netherlands, German, and French. So, okay. what are they ever going to do it in their, in their language? Definitely. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for your contribution. Let's, let me find out from you, madam. Africans living abroad, how do they make sure, you know, they, they keep to this, they teach their children how you know, to speak their languages. Thank you very much. The mm -hmm. only way, the only basic, cheap, easiest way is by speaking it. It's by speaking it to the children, explaining it to them that when I say good morning, for instance, as a Yoruba person, I say when I say ekaro, good morning, ekaro or karo, you reply me back in this manner. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely by day-to-day -day usage okay. and, uh, you know, an exposure to things that we do, the way we do it traditionally in our different uh, okay. indigenous ways, that's the only way. Okay. By dressing up, showing them how to dress up as a, as a Yoruba person, definitely that's the other way. Okay. It is said that an estimated 20 million people speak Yoruba and um, about 2 million people speak it as a second language. Many people like myself speak Yoruba as a second language. And the Yorubas are very proud of their 
culture. Yeah, we are very proud of our culture. Okay, so what are you people doing in retaining this and making sure that your children that you have, you know, outside Nigeria speak the language? Like I said earlier on, one of the ways by which we're doing it, and I must be quick to say that Afeni Ferry Renewal Group UK, we're not the only one that has embarked upon establishing Yoruba schools within and outside of London. There are other uh, Yoruba groups in London, in United Kingdom, that have established or are planning to establish uh, Yoruba schools, okay. whereby we can expose our children, not only our children that we're having in this uh, country, mm -hmm. but also our spouses that are from, that are from other nationalities. Isn't that being selfish? That's not being selfish. That is uh, being proud and being uh, appreciative of our heritage, <laughs> our culture, our language, our tradition. Okay, let me take this color. Hello, color. Thanks for calling. Hello. Yes. Hello. Oh, hello. My name is Jola. I oh. want to contribute to the program. Thank you very much for calling in. What's uh -huh. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from South Edge of Sea in England, yeah? Okay, go ahead, madam. I'm very happy to see this program, and I thank you for promoting Yoruba language. You're welcome, and madam. Children born in England should be made to understand the language and speak the language. Okay. Okay, madam, I'd like to know, what's the essence of learning those languages if the children are not going to be in touch with the land of their ancestors? Who says they won't be in touch with their land of ancestors? The responsibility lies squarely on the shoulders of parents. Parents must make sure that they don't forget where they come from and as in, 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 in the same breath, expose, show their children to these cultures, this tradition, this uh, language, so that the children will also know. Somebody wisely said, your identity is your language. Hmm. Um, last week, I was coming out of my street, and um, I was dressed in Yoruba attire, and uh, a lady passed my, my door, and she greeted me, a uh, uh, apparently a Nigerian, because she greeted me in Yoruba. Now, one thing that first crossed my mind was that, wow, because she greeted quite nicely. Okay. And I know this is somebody who's quite used to speaking Yoruba language. So I greeted her, we discussed, but the, um, something that struck me was, look, I'm quite, I don't know this strange lady, but I'm quite happy to speak with her, and I'm quite happy to continue conversation and know her better. Okay. And that is the language that breaks the barrier. Yeah. Because she broke all my frontiers, all my barriers, and uh, she really came into me. Okay, before I let you go, some people have said that, you know, the moment you hear someone speaking your language, you yes. go and say, uh, tiwan, tiwa, you say, this is, here is my sister, here is my brother. Not that the causing segregation in the society. No. And the other person that doesn't speak your language. Not at all. I tell you one thing. I was, I mean, I was lucky enough to start my practice, law practice in, in Abuja, in Nigeria. And loving languages, I learned Hausa quickly. And when I speak, I, a Yoruba lady, speaking Hausa to an Hausa man, it opened a lot of doors to me. It wasn't segregation. So it when does I bring us together, when I cannot speak, I, I'm working in the federal parastotal. Yes. I cannot speak, I also, and the boss is also, everyone else is getting promoted, and because I cannot speak, I also, I'm not saying that happens, but we've gotten that notion that such a thing likely take place in Nigeria. I'm not aware of that, that you were not promoted. Just because, because I do not speak the language, language of my I've boss. I've never heard of that, and I'd be surprised if that did happen. So if you have, if you say, Oh, she can speak my language, then she is my sister. What about the next man who can speak your language? He's my brother. He's still your brother. The, it, it, the, next bro the next man who can or can't. Who can't speak your language. Who can't speak my language. Yes. He's still a human being. Okay. Because the criteria for work in my office will not be whether you speak Yoruba or not. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Um, hello, Kola. Hello. You can go ahead with your contribution. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from London. Okay, go ahead. 
I just want to make a few points fundamental to your discussion. Okay. I have this lady in your presence that is so determined to make you speak your language and you flatly refuse her uh, to uh, connect with her at the level that um, she is connecting with you. Do you know really that when slavery began, that the first thing that went that the master took away from, from our people was their language? And when you look at all the fundamental issues we are facing in Africa today, everything could be it, it, it traced back to our inability to maintain our language. Yeah. Thank you very much. You didn't say your name. Oh, my name is Anthony. Anthony okay. Right? Yeah, Anthony, thank you. You made your point. But Anthony, must I let you know that I am actually from the Asian city of the Benin Kingdom. I just grew up amongst the Yorubas. I picked up the Yoruba language very well, but I wish I could speak Benin as much as I do Yoruba. Benin, they are part of Yoruba as well. Yeah, the, Yor the Beninese will say the Yorubas are part of the Beninese. Then we are sisters, so how would we <laughs> speak Yoruba <laughs> language together? Well, a lot of people speak, speak um, Yoruba. It's it's I did it. Yoruba. Actually, actually, wants me to say a bit of Yoruba. Please okay. do. Okay, next question. Show to me Nigeria development to repay our in so in the way. Hmm. Sherry, it be t your bani pe teni teni. Mm hmm. Ni be t about the new real affair. That is so in the way. At the yawa, you be as she so in the new day law. Ni be t at a real lady, no, no, fija you pay t over jape a re or no bala was solo. No, no, to talk at it to ye. This is beautiful. Language is just fa it's fascinating. It, it, it is really lovely. It Thank is. you very much. Thank you. And of course, your school, you were going to tell us about your school. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Rose. I have a renewal group here in the United Kingdom. I have a Okay. 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 Yala of course, a son on you are bit at the fair. I was in a little more for a day. I want to get street road. Me can buy well. In the world, do the valley that I for more. A mini apple of bread bear a fairly fair renewal group or for me, Denny. I do a large project. Okay, yeah, I definitely. I, I'm going to come to that school. Uh, I, I is it? is, uh, it's just about two two weeks old. No, okay, how old from what age? Uh, we from, attend? Yes, from six years old. From six, yes. So once my child is six, I, I can bring it. You're out. very much welcome. Okay, then, thank Contact you. Contact number much. one is 075 3926 1158. Okay. Okay. You know what? You know what? Okay, so what politics will do? Development of Nigeria and Nigerian language is definitely it is important. I've been speaking with Matilda Diola de Pojo, me, she is the publicity secretary of a fairly fair renewal group here in the UK. And I'm going to show you another video when we come back. We'll still be talking culture this time around the South South.